parts, and if you want to scribble notes down, like I said, if you have questions, just feel free to, to ask away. So uh, A2, it's a relatively new program. This is its second, third, third term, I believe. Uh, so this is A2 mid, car and learning. Uh, so you guys all teach C1 and C2. Yeah. And so A2 is basically, if you were to focus on like the in-class quiz section of C1, over a three hour period. So it's all testing. So program objective here, to increase students' scoring capability, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. They come once a week, three hours. Uh, each individual class, reading, listening, and speaking and writing will sort of alternate each other week. And so it's three hours of test taking. All the question types are TOEFL Junior and leading towards IBT, which is the internet-based TOEFL that a lot of the students will take when they get to middle school, and a lot of them need it for like high school admissions. And so all of the question types that the students take during the reading and listening sections of the achievement test are pretty much the same ones covered here. So again, it's, uh, it's A2 is usually partnered up with V1. And so V1 is the sort of novel and discussion class, and so they're two very, very different classes. This one doesn't have nearly as much sort of uh, discussion or emphasis on like, creative thoughts and independent thoughts and ideas. It's basically uh, question types, how to get the correct answers, how to learn the strategies, how to sort of figure out where they make incorrect answers. So right off the bat, I would say uh, V1 tends to be a little bit more popular and enjoyable for the students. Uh, so at times, some teachers struggle with maybe the fun aspect of the course. But the one thing uh, for sure is that over the course of a term, over 13 weeks, I don't think there's any other program where the students make as much progress and show as much improvement. So it's really rewarding as a teacher uh, to see them make that progress, and then especially for the students themselves, the self-confidence really, really increases because, uh, like I said, with so much emphasis on the test taking, there's really no choice uh, but, you know, really no option but the scores to go up. So, uh, <coughs> let's move on. So class structure, uh, we'll set up the class Sorry, can, can I ask you a question? You said yeah. alternates every other week? Reading, the reading, no, sorry, the speaking and writing. Okay. Yeah, so if you look here, so each each week, uh, I mean, at our branch, we have A2 classes are the first day of the week, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the partner class is Thursday, Friday. And so that's just the second page, I guess. And so each week, one hour roughly spent on reading, one hour spent on listening, and then writing or speaking. So for example, for week one, they had speaking exercises, and then week two, they flip over to the writing. And it sort of alternates back and forth like that. So I guess with the, the schedule, these are, uh, I guess, recommended times. Of course, uh, it's important that you cover all three components. There are times, however, where uh, reading tends to maybe go a little bit longer. And so I think, big picture over the course of the term, you want to try to make sure that all three components are sort of covered as equal as possible. Another thing, because it's so sort of intense with test question, uh, if you see that the students are sort of getting tired and they're struggling with it, then that's sort of an indicator that it's maybe time to move on. And so you don't feel the need that you have to cover every single question, because if you did, class would probably take closer to four hours, and then it would just be really, really uh, difficult to try to sort of keep their attention for that prolonged period. So uh, reading, listening, and then the writing and speaking, they alternate as well. I would say that I think a lot of the teachers at our bench, uh, over the course of the term, sort of as you get comfortable with the program and as the term progresses, you can switch the order of these around. So they appear that way in the textbook, a reading first, listening, and then the speaking or writing. But as you get comfortable, and as long as you're covering all three sections and devoting roughly an hour to each one, sometimes we'll let the students pick which one they want to do first. So I don't think the order uh, that they take it in has to be the same. So that sort of mixes it up. Uh, every day it's sort of like a fresh one. They don't know which one they're starting with first. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable for them. Questions? So far, so good. Um, I notice this is par. Is this for this current term or is this going to be for next term? Uh, as of right now, I believe there's only one track. Oh, so sweet. this one. So most of your kids track. that uh, that are going to be in A2 par next term, I mean, it sounds like in your branch you guys currently don't have this. Or we just won't okay. this. So then it's yeah, fresh for everybody. And so in the winter term, then after the fall term, most likely it would be the same track. So the students that would take A1 would move on probably to C1, C2. Uh, okay, so component rationale. They break it down. 
there are basically three sections that you would instruct them. So we start with diagnose, we go on to practice, and then to simulate. And so at the start of the class, first page is diagnose. And so basically just like a doctor, this section you would open up the textbook, give them roughly 90 seconds, put the timer on, and then just say, go ahead. And so there's really like no instruction, no guidance, nothing. It's just straight up question. You give them time, they'll submit their answers, and then you would reveal the answer. And so the purpose of this section is to basically introduce them to the question type of the day. So here, for example, main idea. Most of them maybe have seen this before, but they probably don't know the proper strategy and how to break it down. So they'll go through it. Students tend to just sort of quickly kind of skim over and then pick their answer. So a lot of the times, they're not really familiar. And so this is just to sort of gauge how much they understand. So there's really no guidance for this section. Just put it up, have them answer, submit. Reveal the answer, and then move on. So number two goes on to, so each, each class, I guess, there's roughly two question types for the reading and two question types for the listening that they'll focus on. And so over the course of the term, they will have been, they will have learned every question type. And so each lesson, again, with only two question types for the entire hour, lots of repetition, lots of examples, same strategy over and over again. And so it really sort of drills home that question type. So when they leave that day, Ideally, they have a really strong understanding of that question type and how to solve it. Okay, so strategize. This section we would do together, and so what they do here is they're going to break it down to specific steps for the students. And so, with these ones, it's really detailed. It's really specific. It gives you all the different highlighted steps. And so you would go through this with the students. And then I think it's really important to, rather than lecture to them and tell them how to do it and what it is, to really sort of elicit as much as you can from the students. And so, for example, I'd say, okay, Paul, what's, can you read the question for today? Uh, what is the passage mainly about? Good. And then, sorry, what was your name for that? Uh, Fergus. Fergus, good. What's today's question type? Today's question type. So we've introduced, it is stated main idea. Oh, main idea. Okay, good, so main idea. And then, so we break down the different steps. So step one here, identify the topic. And so in this section, for each question type, they have usually two or three uh, little icons that you can click on that sort of break down different tips for them. So the first one there, Main idea, strategy, overview. There we go. Okay. And so what these do is they break down the strategy for the students. So a skip the paragraph for signal words. The signal words exist in the first paragraph, try strategy one, otherwise try strategy two. And so they break down the steps. And so what I would usually do is I have all my students bring notebooks. And then a lot of times this would go on the board in addition to this and have everybody write it down. Because I feel personally that otherwise if they're just staring at it, it's, it's there short term, but if they write it down, and then that's sort of their A2 notebook that they can look back on. Because later on in the term, they have simulation tests, which test, which test them on all the different question types. And so when they review that, it's always helpful for them to, okay, you know, turn back to the main idea page. You know, okay, here's our step, step one, step two, step three. So it breaks down all the different steps for them. And then basically, after the instruction, it tells you what to do here. So step one, find the most frequently mentioned word or phrase in the first paragraph. So if we were to pretend you were students, what was your name, sorry? Paul Fergus? Matthew. Matthew? Scott. Paul Fergus, Matthew Scott. Okay. Fergus, do you see any repeated words in the first paragraph? Uh, spider. Good. Uh, really quick, uh, I know that like, you guys are filming and stuff like that, but there's like this white building behind us putting this huge glare on the screen. Oh, yeah. I can only see the corners of the screen. Sure. Um, it's not like it's just like right in this area. Not right there. Yeah, that's all it. Right. Yeah, so the first one is the first one. Scott, that's okay for your filming. Huh? That's okay for your filming. That's fine. Yeah. Good. So any other? So sorry, Paul, Fergus, Scott, and Matt. 
Nazca. Nazca, okay. Any other repeat words? So we see spiders. How many times do you see spiders? One, two, three. Oh, just in the first paragraph. Just first paragraph, yeah. Uh, twice. Twice, good. Any other repeat words there? Webs. Webs, good. How many times do we see webs? Three. No, two, three. Three. Four. 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 Uh, okay, uh, good. Okay, so what I would do now with all of these, they'll show you. So if you click on the little uh, light bulb icon, it sort of reveals the answer. And so I think the tendency with a lot of teachers is they'll kind of go to that right away. And so I feel like once you've revealed an answer, once you've shown an answer, it's pretty much game over. Because once the students know, then that's it. It's really tough to elicit any further information. So I would say kind of go through the steps, have the student read the question type, identify the question type, identify the strategy, have them kind of go through and practice. And then, because this one's a, you know, a little bit tricky. We do, we do see spiders, that's repeated twice, and we do see webs, so it could be either or. Make a prediction, you know, which one do you think it is? Well, maybe webs, because it's, you know, it's like four times. Okay, and then, you know, survey says, okay, they focused on webs. Step number two, Matt, what's step number two there? Uh, step number two is that there is more than one single word uh, in the first and last sentence of the... Hi, that's okay, come on. I'm sorry, I read, I read step two, number two, uh, step one is what I said. Identify the main idea in step two. Okay. okay, so step two, identify the main idea. So once we've identified the topic, what we think is the topic, we're trying to find out, trying to figure out specifically what they're saying about less. So what we're looking for here is a signal word or phrase that indicates the main idea sentence. And so what we'd have here is signals of main idea sentences. And so maybe before we go on to that step, I would show them this. It's usually a lot smoother today. I don't know what it is. <coughs> okay. So signals of main idea sentences. So these are the key words or phrases that are going to signal to us that once we've identified the topic, what we're going to specifically say about the topic. And so the students will have access to this. It also appears at the end of the lesson. And so they want to really become familiar with this because obviously this is repeated in all the different question types and all the different passages. It's sort of structured the same way. And so you go through and give examples. So there are reversal. So we also know that as contrast from other programs. Signal examples, but yet, however, emphasis. We go through and explain some of these with them. And then once we've talked about these, we go back and try to identify a signal phrase. So First, find a single word or phrase that indicates the topic. So we've had our webs. Any single words there? Reversal and reversal. Good. However, any others? One such. Okay. And why would one such? So yeah, when I would, I guess, from a student perspective, asking, so when they, whenever they identify something, try to get them why is that important. Okay, so why did you choose that? Why do you think that's important? Okay, so I guess we don't have to go through all the different question types. It's really sort of structured and breaking, broken down. I think uh, one of the most important things obviously comes in the preparation. Class is so much easier when you're thoroughly prepared. And so I usually have my notebook and then for every question type, all of these sort of steps are already sort of written down. So you're familiar with them and it's not obviously that you're looking at it for the first time or you're struggling with it. It's similar if you've ever taught IBT. Uh, IBT takes more prep than any other class but if you're thoroughly prepared, things go so much smoother. And so not just having the answer, but having all of these signal or you know, signal phrases circled uh, so that you know it clear, I guess. And so that would be the practice section. So if we do it together, strategize, learn the strategy, and then when we go on, we would have our own question. So it's a new question, it's still a stated main idea question, and the practice section. So it breaks down the strategies again. I would go through these with the students again. So same sort of format. What's the question type? Okay, good. How do you know? What's the first step of the strategy? Okay, so we're looking for those topic. How do we find the topic? Good, okay, repeated words. And so go ahead. You know, you could print up the free draw, have the students go through and circle all the repeated words. Okay, based on that, what do you think this passage is going to be about? So trying to always elicit as much as you can from the students. So what do you think is important? Why is that important? What's the next step of the strategy? Okay. And then after that, we would go on to simulate. So at this point, we've gone through, we've diagnosed, we've strategized and practiced. And so now this one is basically, okay, you have the tools, 
go ahead and try. So I would put up the timer. I think it's really important with these ones to always give them sort of a guideline. Even if they're not able initially to complete it in the required time, it's really helpful because I guess we're gearing towards the TOEFL Junior Test, to the IBT Test, and to the Achievement Test, which of course are all timed. And so we want to get them in the habit of kind of practicing and knowing how long they have for each question. So they would all go through, underline, annotate. I think annotating and underlining is really, really important. Uh, you'll find sort of as the term progresses sometimes, when you go through the individual lessons, they're really good at highlighting and annotating. And then when they go through and take the simulation test, for some reason they just sort of resort back to just kind of looking and trying to pick the answer. And so that can be really frustrating from an instructor perspective because we spend so much time breaking down the steps and helping them and then they kind of go back to the old way. So just kind of proctoring, making sure that they're annotating, that they're underlining. Uh, you could even have the drawing option on where you can see what they're doing, you can see what they're highlighting. One big point here I would say that when they submit their answers, a lot of the students, because it's test taking and it's so focused on scores, a lot of the students are really, uh, you know, the self-confidence issues at times with students who, who get questions wrong and who maybe can't compete or don't keep up with the other students. So you can always switch the names or really kind of reward students who do a great job. Uh, I guess when you're showing the answers, just be aware that there can be kids who do really, really well. They find it easy at times, but there's other students who struggle. And kids, of course, can be kind of mean. So with this one, I guess the other point I was trying to say, when you show them their answers and you've shown, okay, so let's say, you know, three or four students have picked A and B and the class is sort of split. Rather than just showing what the correct answer is, have you know elicit from them and show them which answer is correct and why. Because again, if you just show them the answer, any sort of instruction after that is extremely difficult. Because again, once they know the answer, their their attention is lost. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Good, and then so the rest simulate, diagnose. Now, this one goes back because it's a different question, so this one's gonna go on to implied main ideas. And so again with the diagnose, that's strictly for them. Okay. So great job, we finished the first question type. Now we're going to go on question type two. So again, this is diagnosed. This is, you're going to do this by yourself. So timer up, 90 seconds. Go ahead, try your best. So again, they'll go through, they'll annotate, they'll choose their answer, they'll submit. At this section, again, we're just sort of seeing where they're at. So we don't have to explain anything at this point. Show the correct answer. A round of applause, they'll cheer for themselves. Okay, let's go on to the strategy. Okay, so you can see here, this one's a different question type. And then, so different steps, different strategies. I would do the same thing, strategy on the board, have them take it in their notebooks, break it down, what's the strategy, what did you identify, why is that important? So really quick, there is a diagnosis at the beginning of every class. Yep, that's... Because there's going to be, like for today, a state of main idea, a five main idea, yep. the next day it'll be like... Um, Detail and reference. Got it. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much every class starts with a diagnosis. And again, remember, you can feel free to switch the order around. So listening would also start with the diagnose. The speaking or writing also starts with the diagnose. They have their own sort of speaking or written task. So pretty much every lesson, regardless of which section you start with, is going to start with the diagnose. You guys want to hear? Yeah. yeah. That, you can feel that that's on? You can turn down the picture. Okay. Any questions so far? So I guess the important thing here is the, the three sections. Diagnose, strictly for them. Practice and strategize, break it down to specific steps. Now with these, uh, they're really well structured, they're really clear. Again, I would have them take notes. I put these on the board. Sometimes I even sort of simplify them or paraphrase them so that it's like one or two kind of keywords. So that as the lesson progresses, if we can ask them step one, they'll know right away. Okay, so topic, good. key phrase, and then I think that's pretty much it for the reading. Listening, diagnose. So uh, at our branch, and I think some of the other branches, we've been having them take notes on note taking paper. So when I mentioned the notebooks that they have, the reason is uh, it's a lot easier to take notes on paper than it is on the tab. So what we do uh, sort of as a safeguard, I guess, for the parents, have them take a picture of their notes and they can input it into the tab. 
So I guess the last thing you want is to, for them to go home and a parent looks and, well, what did you do? There's nothing on the tab. So if they take a picture of their notes, they can actually embed it into here, so then they can show their parents, oh, okay. So more space, uh, a lot easier to help them with indentation, annotation, organization. So first track, you would play straight through, they would take notes. There's their question, main topic of the talk. So again, it's still diagnosed, submit their answers, show them the correct answer. Okay, great job. And then just like reading, break it down into the steps. So don't forget these ones up here, these ones explain, so like listening section, overview, note-taking tips, these will explain the different aspects of them. Students have these in their tab as well, so when they go home, they can review these. They should be reviewing these because they pop up and they repeat themselves over the course of the term. And then just kind of like reading, because uh, I know we don't have a lot of time, all the different steps would be shown here for you. So they give you background. All of these passages usually talk about school life. So it's oftentimes like a conversation between two students or a student and a professor, student and a guidance counselor, and they're always about something that would happen at school. Good, and then key phrases to identify the main topic. So I'm going to, we're going to, I would like everyone to. So these are key phrases that they would want to listen to. And then once you've gone through, they give you model notes. And so the way that I usually do these is I would play the track again for them. So what they've done is they'll break down that first one track into separate parts. And so this part will be really short. It's clearly just the introduction. And so, like I said, again, instead of just showing this to them, I would play this again and have them take notes. And so again, instead of like overly lecturing, you know, what did you hear? Okay, is that important? Should we write it down? Why should we write it down? And then where should we write it down? With these ones, uh, I would get the students in the habit of using a key chart. And so, because this is a conversation, so they might have male and female. And so I think the benefits of the T-chart, obviously you, 